All right, this morning, this is a sermon I've kind of done before, and I, and I changed it up, and I, I titled it Chaos or Peace and Order. And uh, this is my message, not to just us, but, just, but the American society right now. What do you want? Do you want chaos, or do you want peace and order? Because if you want what's good, you got to look to who what makes good, you right? You got to look to God. So we're going to start off in Genesis, and then we're going to read the entire Bible. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're just going to start off in Genesis. So um, let's let's read the first two verses, and then I'll pray. It says, "In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth." The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I thank you that I've learned so much from your word. And I thank you, Lord, that you helped me put this together. And Jesus, we can't thank you enough that you came into this world to give us peace. We can have peace in the midst of a storm. We can have peace in the midst of chaos. And we thank you, Lord, that you died on that cross. And now we have your spirit who breathed out this word and also was over all of creation <clears throat> as it was made. We give you praise, glory, and honor for it, Lord. And I ask that you speak to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so this morning, I want to start off with this. In the beginning, God created, right? We see that. He created everything. I found that very interesting that Kevin was talking about creation. Are you, are you hearing from the Spirit today, this morning? All right. I should have just let you teach this. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'll get there. I'll get there. So... We know that God created everything, right? And then the earth was f without form and void. All right, everyone say nothing. <laughs> nothing. It was nothing. And darkness was on the face of the deep. All right. This is how ancient people would read this creation account. The Greeks, for those of you who know about the, about the Odyssey, the Greeks, ancient Greeks would have read this, and when they would have got to, darkness was on the face of the deep. They would have understood that that meant death. No life. See, the Greeks were scared to death of the deep water. They made up sea monsters that are out there. Other societies did the same thing. If you had no control over the sea and you went out there, that's death. Especially no light, darkness. Darkness in, 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 in the face of the deep, chaotic storms and all that. That scared them to death because they knew that was death. All right, so ancient people who got to that point says, okay, that's nothing and that is death. That is what they call Chaos. That's no control over anything, and uh, if you go out there, you're dead. Now, a movie called The Pirates of the Caribbean, they made three or four of them, and I've watched them all at one time, and I don't remember which one this is in, but they did portray a, a, a ancient Greek goddess named Calypso. You might remember that scene. When they finally get, got, let her come out of her body form, right, what does she do? She started to whirlpool and chaos and all sorts of stuff started happening, right? Because she was not happy. They, they, she, they, they, they messed up, all right? And she was making sure they knew she was going to kill them. So, anyways, that is how the ancient people saw the sea. They saw it as chaos and craziness. And uh, you better be in good graces. Let's talk about the Greeks. You better be in good gra graces with the gods if you're going to go sailing. If you're going to go traveling, you know, you better appease them or you're dead. So this is how the ancient people saw this, all right? 
other accounts of creation from other cultures and other societies in ancient times, they said that their supreme God came down upon chaos and cut it up, subdued it, killed it, messed it all up, and then took chaos and made order and life. Now you're like, why in the world would you bring that up this morning, John? Because our creation account is doing something a little bit different. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. When I read the rest of the creation account, you're going to catch something. God's in control. Chaos, death, everything we don't want. People riding in the streets and killing each other. We're, we're, we're seeing all that. You know what God's doing? He's in control. He's over it. If God doesn't freak out, you shouldn't either. Amen? One reason we need to pray for our leaders is because ancient kings were looked at as a demigod. All right? I'm building to a certain point here. They understood that they had their position, it was given to them by God, so therefore they're a, you know, they're like a demigod, and they needed to keep law and order. So they started writing laws. The kings would decree laws. You can read that in scripture. Why did they do that? Because they understood it was their responsibility to keep law and order so life could happen because their position was given to them by the God or gods, whatever it was that they were believing in. They understood this, all right? But again, what does our creation account say? Spirit's in control. The Spirit is in control. And yes, you did come into a Pentecostal church, and yes, that is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, and it's in you. I don't know about the rest of you who want to hear about having power of God this morning, but I'm all for it right now. All right, let's go ahead and read the rest of the creation account that I'm going to focus this on. Okay. Verses 3 through 4 says this, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Our God is so powerful. Our God is so powerful, all he has to do is speak. There's no battle. He speaks. See, the ancient Jews had this creation account, and there's something different about this God. He doesn't fight anything. He just speaks, and order, and good things happen. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather serve that God. That's a God to have. I don't want a God who's like me, who's, who has emotions that are a mess, and has a, 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 are there little ears in here? There's a few. Desire to reprocreate that can get all messed up like the ancient gods of, of Greek did, you know, and, and they would do things and they would, you know, get humans out of the way. They were very capricious, you know. We have a God who's not controlled by anything. He has nothing. He is he's not like us who are messed up. I'm gonna talk about sin in a minute, right? He is good, and when he speaks, things happen, and when it happens, it is good. That's the God we serve. Amen? All right, that was a good sermon. All right, amen? All right, I'll go get some chicken, and I'll see you guys over next door, right? All right, okay. So, when he speaks, good things happen. The Gospel of John talks about that he is the light of life. When it starts talking about this creation account and comes back to it, it adds that he, the Son is the light, and that light in man is is the light of life. So, 
Let's all just say Jesus together. Jesus. Yes, he is right there in this. And again, what he does is good. All right, you guys ready for the New Testament? All right, let's hop on over to the New Testament. In John 34, in John 4, 35 through 41. I don't know why those numbers trip me up. I couldn't even type them earlier. This is, uh, this is what we get in the Gospels. Yeah, you know what I mean, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit, take over. Amen. Let the Spirit take control. Here we go. All right. This is what the Spirit breathed out, even though your pastor can't say it, right? On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the, mul the multitude, they took him along in the boats as he was. Okay. And other little boats were there also with him. And a great windstorm arose. Chaos, right? Everything ancient people don't like. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on the pillow. I heard a pastor preach on this one time. He says, you know the best place to be? On that same pillow. When, when the world's going nuts, just rest with Jesus. All right. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Did you catch what he did? He spoke. Same God, right? You guys catching the point I'm about to make? Same God. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Good things, right? That's what we want. Peace and calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who could this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. Now, people will preach this and say, well, they realize he was more than a prophet. He was more than a rabbi. Yes. Do you realize what they realized at that point in time? Sitting in their boat, this would scare me to death too. The sitting in my boat, let's just put ourselves, we're the disciples, we're all in a boat. We're, we're about to die and now we're really scared. All right. Sitting in our boat is Yahweh, is Jehovah himself. The one who speaks and things happen. They realize the reason why they're scared, and they, they have every right to be scared, they realize God himself is in their boat. God himself is right here in this sanctuary. You should walk in here scared. <laughs> Not of me. Not of me. She has some reverent fear. Amen. So they understood that Yahweh's in their boat. But the great thing about this is this was Jesus. Now who is Jesus? He's the Son of God, right? And he came not just to calm the waves and the wind and all that, but in Ephesians it talks about that he is the one who makes peace. In Ephesians 2, 14 through 16, it says this, For he himself is our peace, he has made both one. He has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the intimacy that, was, uh, that is the law uh, of commandments con contains the ordinances, so to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, therefore, thereby putting to death the enmity. Jesus not just came to tell the wind and the waves to stop it, stop scaring my disciples to death so I can really scare them, right? He didn't just come to do that. He came to give us peace so we wouldn't have God's wrath abiding upon us. And he did that at the cross. 
That's the reason why it's the symbol of our faith. It is everything. That is where the power of God is. It's at the cross. He took the chaos. He took chaos, disorder, and dysfunction so we can have peace on that cross. If you have a family that has some disorder, if you have some relationships that are dysfunctional, he took that and the power to, to, to get through all that is at the cross. When Jesus, in person, as the Holy Spirit is in us, he is, and I said this earlier, this is John 1, 3. You can put that up. He is the light. He is the light. I think I messed that up, but it's in there. It's like the next verse. All right. He is the light of men, and he brings order. When our lives are a mess because of sin, if you keep reading the creation account, it goes into another part of the creation where it starts talking about how he made other things and, and gives you a, a, an order outline of how things were going. And then it goes into chapter 3. Chapter 3, Adam and Eve decided to listen to some stupid snake, and they should have told the snake to shut its snake face. They had the power to do that, but they didn't. They listened to it. And he said, hey... Wouldn't some selfishness be good right now? You can have some things. Thus, the root of sin, right? And when you turn away from God, and you turn away from his order, and you turn away from what he has for you, you get chaos. But when you get back right with God, when you realize that he took it, everything you, that you did wrong on that cross, and the consequences of it, you get to have peace and order in your life. When God is the God of light, what it's saying is he will light your path. If this room was completely dark and there was a bunch of debris in, along this aisle and I try to walk through it, I'm probably going to trip over it. But if I had a flashlight, I can make it to the back door with a little bit of peace, clarity, and calm. <laughs> Amen? Amen. He is the light of life. He brings in the order. And we battle with evil. That is in the air. And that's in Ephesians 6, uh, 6, 12. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but we war against principalities and powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Where is our battle? It's in the atmosphere. First battle is in you. The way you get through that is you submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. You get that storm all taken care of. Your next battle is what's against you out there. It's all in the air. Some people have tied storms to, to, to demonic powers. And I can go with that. Because what does a storm do? We're in Kansas. What if it starts turning? Destruction. It causes destruction. My grandpa Meadows and my brother both did this at one time in their life. They saw a tornado coming and they told it to get back up in the sky. And it did. You guys notice that we were praying because we had all these storms that were supposed to hit us and we kept saying, all right, Lord, just let it rain, but we don't want destruction. Well, it still has not rained, so we're praying too good. <laughs> Which is fine with me. I'm tired of mowing grass. So, yeah. Anyways, for those who mow grass, I know you guys want it to rain. I know. All right. My brother, when he was a little boy, grandma and grandpa were, were, were driving. Grandma had, had Samuel. And there was a twister in the field, and they could see it. And he was like three years old, from what I heard. And he took his little fist, and he hit the dash. He says, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And grandma's. One of her famous stories was that it went right back up into the cloud. I heard that my grandpa Meadows one time was facing a tornado, and he did the same thing. He told it to get back up in that cloud, and it did. It got right back up in that cloud, and it came, went over Hayesville, and we were all right, and the church was all right. So 
The power of God is in us, and we can take charge over everything that comes against us. That means any storm of life. Amen? Amen. Next verse. Mel was preaching last week, as you guys know. And he used this verse in the whole sermon this week downloaded. I went, oh, I know what God wants me to talk about. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, I was telling you about kings who thought they were a god or the son of a god because they made law. I'm going to tell the people they're going to do this and it's going to be ordered because I'm a gift from God. You know, that's what they thought. All right. They did do good things. And there is, if, if you have a good king, you had a good land. Amen. That did happen. And the good kings you could read about in the history of Israel is because they were focused on God. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Well, here we go. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. We are all the children of God, right? We're all heirs of God because of what Jesus did. We believe in that. He was the firstborn of, of the dead, and now we are too, right? We get the inheritance. We also get the power. Again, I will not apologize. You walked into a Pentecostal church. Right now, we need the power of God. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> I can't stress that enough right now. What is a peacemaker? Well, if you read the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, you find out things that we are to love our enemies. And we are also, in Romans, it talks about how we are supposed to live peaceable with everybody to the, to the extent that we can. As much as possible, live peaceable. God talks about how blessed a peacemaker is. Well, we're Christians, right? We're Christians who also believe in the power of God. So where we go, the Spirit goes with us. We have the ability to make peace anywhere we're at. We can actually dis disfuse an argument. If we're listening to the Spirit, if we're slow to speak, quick to hear, and then speak, as the Bible tells us, we can be peacemakers. Now, here's the whole thing I was wanting to drive to this morning. The reason I brought up all these scriptures is one day I was thinking, and I realized, I'm not the only person called by God to do the job that I do. Do you know that God causes people to be doctors? God caused people to be first responders? That's a calling. It's like my job. I wouldn't do it if you're not called to do it. Do you know that there's other denominations out there that tell their people, well, if you just want to be a pastor and it sounds like a fun thing to do, we'll sign you up. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do anything you're not called to do. I believe that police officers are called by God to do their job because they keep the peace. And I have evidence. I have scriptural evidence for that. Let's read Romans 13, 1 through 4 together, shall we? Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Some days I have problems with that, but it's the word of God and it didn't change. It's still there. Be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinances of of God. That's hard, that's hard to take some days, especially when you're listening to a person in power and you're politically against them. It's really hard to... Uh, I don't know about the rest of you. Maybe you just need to pray for your pastor or, or get a better one up here. And, you know, Going on. Therefore, whoever resists the ordinances resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Going on. 
for the rulers are not a terror to good works but to evil do you want to be of unafraid of the authorities i've heard some cool testimonies about people says you know what it's nice i get to wave at the police officer now instead of ducking yeah that's a good testimony yeah 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 i can actually wave at them i'm part of the community all right do what is good and you will have praise from the same for god is a for for he is a minister he for he is god's minister for you to for you to you for good but if you do evil be afraid for he does not bear the sword in vain right now in washington they're trying to limit what officers can and cannot do we'll talk about that for he is god's minister an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Police officers are called by God to do their job. And right now, in the media, they're showing videos over and over again about people who decided to mess with riot police officers and got the living beat out of them. I don't think that person had the spirit of God in him because he had no wisdom. What are you doing marching towards a police officer who's in riot gear? What do you think they're going to do to you? What do you think they're wearing all that for? Now, people, I want to tell you something. I thank God that we have a police force. We have a military force and we have a police force. And back in the 60s, we found out you don't mix those two. Because a soldier is trained to kill. A police officer is, is trained in crowd control. And to get things back to order, hopefully where nobody dies. I thank God for having police officers. In Kent State, we found out. If you push on the National Guard, they have guns. They're a soldier. They're trained to do one thing. And people died. They have a calling. And the reason why we have... Uh, let, me, let, me throw, let me throw myself in there. The reason why we have terrible pastors. The reason why we have terrible police officers. The reason we have ter terrible medical staff and physicians is because they're not focusing on God. They don't have God in their life to make peace happen to create order, to bring order, to make good things happen, to be in good health. Our Lord is the healer. He is not of death. The reason we have chaos is because people are called by God to do their job, but they do not have the Spirit. And that is why they're doing a horrible, horrible, terrible job. We have police officers who cause death and or detriment to health and life. We have corrupt doctors and medical staff who cause death or detriment to health and life. Now, I could really chirp on that. Why does the coronavirus keep finding its way into nursing homes? Well, it's probably because there's a nursing staff who don't care about their patients, so they'll do whatever they want to do. And then they'll bring it in and they'll go, oh, I don't know how it happened. You have to sit. I have a cousin who works for one. You have to show up 15 minutes before you can clock in, answer the same 20 questions, and then have your temperature check took. I think some of them are probably lying, and they probably took a little trip on their day off. And why do they do that? Because they don't care because they don't have the spirit of God. We know today there's doctors who won't see you if, you're, if your insurance doesn't cover it. The Hippocratic Oath has become hypocritical. What's the problem? They don't have the Spirit of God. We have judges who are causing death and detriment to health. 
They're making up laws from nothing. They're going to bring us back into chaos. We have judges, if they're not paid off, or if you don't have the high, the, the, the high power lawyer that you need, you're going to do time. So they look good. I've had that happen to some people I know here in Wichita. They had no money, therefore they did t time for a crime they didn't commit. I know about injustice. I'm very aware of it. And of course, we have corrupt politicians and medias and other groups that want to see this country fall because they serve the God who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you want to tear down America, you are not of God. If you're fostering the chaos in the streets, you're not of God. Yeah, you all know what I'm thinking right now. There's some groups right now I could just blast. I could just blast them right now. You're not of God. You're about death, destruction, and stealing. So here's my warning to us all and my closing points. The church exists because we have the answer to chaos. We have, let's say his name together, Jesus. Let's say it one more time. Jesus, who gives us life, peace, and order. The power of God in a person's life and society will bring revival, revival, good health, peace, and order. I can't even watch the news anymore. I don't know about the rest of you. I, I can't even watch it anymore. It's getting very old. I was talking to Dad this morning. In the church world, right now, they're coming up with all these ideas of things to do. And I walk into this building and I think about all the things I could be doing. <laughs> I got plenty of things to do. I'm actually handing some off and some are going to the wayside. But there's all these things to do. Church, we need the power of God. If we need one last sermon being preached, I'll sit down so we can pray. We had nothing without Jesus, and this world has nothing if we're not ministering Jesus. My answer is prayer. Prayer. We pray according to the word. We pray according to what Jesus did on the cross for everybody out there. That is the power of God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Jesus, I can't thank you enough that you came into this world to save us. And to take control of the chaos that's in us, Lord, that we can be in good mental health. We can have our emotions under control. And we can be led by the Spirit of God who breathed out the Word and put creation into order. Lord, we thank you for that power. And Lord, we also thank you that we can minister in power. And Lord, we can be the peacemakers. We can cause peace to happen. We can cause the answers in society to come forth of what they're asking, Lord. Lord, I pray that you continue to change our hearts so that we will turn from our wicked ways, that there will be no more chaos in us so we can be part of the solution that's going on around us. And Lord, I thank you that we can take control and we can take charge of spiritual spiritualities and principalities that are in the air that are contrary to us, and we can tell them to get under our feet 
and the gospel will go forth. Lord, I ask that we will have prayer meetings. Lord, I ask that we will know what the word of God says so we can speak it into existence. Lord, we can speak your power into this atmosphere. Lord, we can pray your word and we can speak your word. And Lord, I pray for every leader out there who knows you, Lord, that they will be empowered by you because they know what your word says, because they're hearing your word right now. And I pray for every leader out there who doesn't know you, Lord, that they will hear from you. They will turn from their wicked ways and they will serve the living God so they can bring forth life, peace, order. And Lord, people can have good health and they can prosper in a land that is blessed by you and it can continue to be prospered by you. Lord, everything you do is good. And we need your goodness to rule and reign again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen.